Um, uh, our second award uh, is the award for uh, intellectual property. And uh, the intellectual property award goes to Leela Bailey at the Internet Archive. Uh, Leela serves as the policy counsel for the Internet Archive, uh, but that humble title does not really portray the outsized impact that her work is having on the world of intellectual property policy. Um, if, I, if I can try a, a metaphor here, uh, I believe at the Internet Archive, Leela Bailey is like the teller to Brewster Kahle's Penn Gillette. Um, you know, the audience may hear Brewster talk more, but Leela is a full partner in making the magic happen. Every day, Leela takes the mission of the Internet Archive and networks with the broader policy world of public interest groups, libraries, policymakers, to remind the world of the importance of preserving the creative works of the world and the history of the Internet for posterity. She and the Archive have led the annual celebration of Public Domain Day, uh, when creative works become available to the public for all to use. And without Leela, uh, we may lose equitable access to the world of information and knowledge spread through a beloved institution, the institution uh, called the Public Library. Uh, while, while others in the library community may be cautious at times, Leela and the Archive have boldly organized librarians around the cause of controlled digital lending, or CDL, which is a safe way to loan digital publications owned by libraries while <laughs> avoiding pirated copies. Uh, she has led a, in promoting its legal case and leading efforts to educate policymakers about its importance to researchers uh, and to local communities and their most vulnerable populations, especially during the pandemic. So we, are, we were proud to support Leela and the Archive when they brought librarians from around the country for an introductory lobby day on, on CDL last year. Um, and ready to do it again when you want to, Leela. Um, we're always willing to share and collaborate. Uh, she's always willing to share and collaborate because Leela knows that uh, policy success is a team effort. And so today, I am proud that this team player gets a moment in the spotlight to herself. Please welcome our IP3 award winner in the category of intellectual property, Leela Bailey. Leela, where are you? There she is. Hi. Um, wow. So thank you so much, uh, Public Knowledge uh, and everybody uh, for this tremendous honor um, and for continuing to care about obscure copyright policy issues, whatever Tim Wu may think. Um, Thought leaders in the library community have been working on this idea of controlled digital lending for over a decade. So I really feel like I'm a relative newcomer. Um, and I want to make sure that I acknowledge the work of the whole community that I just feel so grateful to be a part of. So thank you so much to Michelle Wu, Kyle Courtney, Dave Hansen, Mary Minow, Jason Schultz, Pam Samuelson, and all the librarians and scholars who have been contributing over the years. Thanks also to Brewster Kale and all of my amazing colleagues at the Internet Archive for your hard work and passion for building the library of the future. You inspire me every day. <sighs> for me as a kid, books were really a lifeline. Um, I didn't have a lot of friends and we didn't have a lot of money. During the seemingly endless summers of my childhood, my mother would take me to the library. I would come home with a stack of books latest Babysitter's Club book or some young romance novel. I devour classics like Little Women, Jane Eyre, The Lord of the Rings. Stories became my playdates and characters were my dear friends. Books really got me through the rough waters of my early adolescence and the library was my gateway to books. But it wasn't until law school and that I really began to understand the fundamental role of libraries in our democratic society. It was my first year of law school and like all first years, I took legal research and writing. And in the very first month of that class, my first month of law school, my instructor gave my class a dire warning. She said, do not get addicted to expensive databases. While you're here in law school, representatives of these companies are gonna sell you on the idea that you need them. That unless you do the most comprehensive, expansive, and by the way, expensive searches, you might as well be committing malpractice. But if you wanna to go to work for a nonprofit, 
If you want to do impact litigation on issues of social justice or defend indigent people on death row, you're not going to be able to afford those databases. You're going to have to learn to use the books. And then she took us to the library and showed us how to do legal research the old fashioned way. This was Berkeley and there were a lot of idealists in my class. We'd come to law school to make the world a better place, to fight for social justice and make positive change. So that warning really hit home. Access to books and access to justice go hand in hand. And that to me is why this idea of controlled digital lending matters. Controlled digital lending or CDL for short, um, is about preserving the rights that libraries and readers have in the physical world when we go online. With print materials, a library's ability to buy and lend copies and preserve them for future generations is protected by law. Equal access to information is foundational to our democratic society and it's why libraries exist. And the promise of the internet is that our libraries can be even better than they are today. Through the internet, a kid in rural Alabama can have access to the same world-class library as someone who lives in a major urban center. The elderly and those with print or physical disabilities can have the same equal access as the able-bodied. Digital access should make our libraries more equal, more democratic, more fair. Unfortunately, that promise has not yet been fulfilled. Why? Because today, libraries can't buy digital content. Most publishers make libraries license ebooks, like the way you might rent a car or a tuxedo. Through licensing, publishers are trying to change what it means to own a book. They're trying to change what it means to be a library. Through these license agreements, we've seen publishers charging many times more for digital access than for print books. This is why those legal databases my teacher warned me about are so expensive. The underlying cases, all in the public domain, yet getting access to them, being able to search through them to find that one case that might save your client's life or their freedom. Somehow this can cost thousands of dollars. Now cost of course is a major concern, especially for our public libraries. But importantly, these licenses also strip away a library's right to preserve books for future generations. These for-profit publishers simply don't do the kind of work required to preserve our cultural heritage. Publishers are not archivists. They make decisions based on market considerations, not cultural ones. Archiving is not in the interests of big publishers whose license agreements expire every couple of years. And perhaps worst of all, in the digital world, publishers can refuse to license eBooks to libraries at all. We've already seen Macmillan impose an eight week embargo on library access to bestsellers and Amazon refuses to license its own imprints, its own exclusive eBooks to libraries at any cost. So this is the trend we're seeing in our digital world. Charging libraries ever increasing prices for the same stuff over and over, stripping them of the rights they have in their print collections, and perhaps eventually forcing libraries out of the market for some books altogether. This trend should trouble anyone who cares about libraries. It should trouble all readers and everyone who believes that access to knowledge and access to justice should be for everyone. It troubles me, and that is why I am fighting for controlled digital lending. CDL says we get to keep our rights. We get to take them online with us. We must preserve the power of print so that our libraries will be more equal, more democratic, and more fair. That's what's at stake in the lawsuit that four major commercial publishers have brought against the Internet Archive during this global pandemic. This is what I'm fighting for, what the Internet Archive and all of our library partners are working towards. And I hope all of you will join us. Thanks again to Public Knowledge for recognizing the value of this work and for standing with us in this fight. Let's win this one. Thank you.
Yes, thank you. Thank you, Leela. And congratulations to you as well. Um, we're so glad to have you here today.